just went to Alcatraz. All right. With authority now. <clears throat> That's back. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Do it like this. Take 55. But you had it from this side. Is that the same? No, you, 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 you don't close it like this. You close it like this. Yeah, you got you to approach from the left, man. <laughs> am, I, am I lying? That's right, isn't it? See, that's a pro move right there. I mean, he was over here. I was just trying to miss Yeah, but he was just know. messing with you. He didn't want to walk around <laughs> the camera. <laughs> Oh, okay. As long as the camera can see it, we're, yeah. we're happy, right? Yeah. Everybody cool? Good? You guys ready? Yeah. All right. This is re-amping? Mm -hmm. Re-amping take one. Joe, um, in, in your last two appearances on uh, the End to the Lair segment, you mentioned re-amping. Just want to make sure everybody kind of knows what it is. Can you give us a, a, a quick description of how you re-amp? Um, how I first started to reamp, like before there was an actual reamp, and you're probably very familiar with it too, when you had a sound on tape that you didn't like, you would just take that sound off of tape and put it into a compressor so you can knock the level down or go to the tape machine and turn the, mm -hmm. the level down and, and run it through something else, whether it be a delay or uh, another guitar amp, whatever. And that's where I think the word reamp came about. Um, I always thought it was r running it through a guitar amp, but it's just a, it, it, it just means putting Take it through another through thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, actually Jason Cassaro was one of the first guys I've ever seen where we would reamp stuff before there was an actual reamp made. And we were using DBX 160 compressors and putting it on one-to-one -one and turning the gain down. So there wasn't any extra compression, just less volume, and we would turn it up depending on what the guitar sound we were looking for. Um, but what I do is, um, you know, you always try to get super duper hi-fi about what you're using and this reamp sounds good that reamp sounds good in the end you're trying to change the sound anyway so who cares if you don't have a reamp you have an output of your DAW turn the fader down take the output of your DAW pump it into what do you, whatever you have we were talking a second ago about um, trying to separate yourself from other people so mm -hmm. being able to take a sound and using a guitar pedal and manipulate it as opposed to putting a plug in and automating it automatically it gives you a different um, appearance to people that listen to your mix and it makes you sound more unique so um, let me ask you something when I first started engineering I didn't have a lot of tools available a lot of gear and I, I had I got a snare sound that I, that I thought could be better so I took a 12 inch guitar speaker and just set it on top of a snare awesome I mic I sent the sound from the tape to a, to that guitar amp with the speaker torn out of it sitting on top of the snare and every time the snare hit it went through the speaker, and I had it so loud I ended up destroying the speaker. But I mic'd that, and and it gave me more attack. That would be considered yeah, reamping, right? That's total reamping. I mean, taking a any sound that you have that and putting it through a PA into a room, yeah. and then miking up the room I've done to put that. some ambience. Yeah. Um, my partner Chad does a, a wild thing with acoustic guitars. We get that really skinny piezo mm -hmm. type sound. So mm -hmm. um, he uh, demonstrates some, a lot of stuff that he's mixed is uh, the piezo sound through a guitar uh, open back cabinet and, mm -hmm. and using the back, miking the back oh, okay. to get resonance. And that adds a resonance. You have to be careful with phase though, right? Right, exactly. So, uh, but, but usually it makes that skinny sound kind of tubby because that's what you're getting out of the back of a you know, not directly in front of a speaker anyway, you're behind it. Wow. There is sound emanating behind, so. I, I learned something from you because I always thought reamping was, I use the term more to mean like I've gotten, I've got a clean sound, a direct input, what we call DI sound on tape or in Pro Tools. Then I can take that sound and send it out to a real guitar amp and then mic that and bring that back into Pro Tools and record it. So I've always thought of reamping as to do with guitar speakers and guitars, but you're telling me the term can be used, anything you send out of the box yeah. to a, another situation that can, okay, I've got a Leslie cabinet here that I put out when I'm mixing all the time, and I'll pump, I'll reamp vocals mm -hmm. or guitar parts, or even I read about uh, Roxy Music putting a snare through a Leslie. Yeah. That's what got me started. Well, Mike and Jimmy Mike Page used a lot on guitar. Let me yeah. ask you something. Um, you, 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 You've got a lot of impedance issues when you come out of uh, a, a pro 
plus four output like a converter are, what what techniques do you use to solve that problem are you using like um like uh radial makes some good stuff radial makes a, a good reamp um it, it's the actual reamp itself john keena birdie made was really great and Jonathan Little, Little Labs makes a lot of cool uh, thing called the PCP, which is the professional to GC pedal interface, which uh -huh. was uh, inspired by um, actually Chad and I making him make reamp. And basically, a reamp is is matching the impedance, and so you have the transformer, and you can change that transformer. It could be anything from a uh, low impedance to a high impedance adapter. You buy Radio Shack for ten bucks. You know, maybe it can it be affordable. Yeah, it's super, and you can make your own. It's just really that transformer that changes the sound, and in in the reamp itself is the one that sounds probably the nicest, the one that Jonathan yeah. uses and Radial uses. Yeah. But without a reamp, turn your turn your volume down. I mean, go to a compressor, yeah. turn the output, turn your fader down. That's yeah. you're changing the sound anyway. So plus, in, in the age we live in, there's a lot of information on building your own online. Um, but but uh, I used to I used to just go in and out of the um, inserts on my SSL, right. and that that because uh, it drops it. Well, the insert back in is not balanced, and it's right. just easier to, to accept it. So there you go, everything you need to know about reamping from Joe Barisi. Or or an aux end. Hmm. Aux end. Oh yeah. Yeah, level. Good Chad point. Blake. All right, guys. Can I just get one thirty-second promo we can use on socials, and then you can use on socials as well. Uh, what 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 do I, what do I do? Just, uh, just mention the pr 